morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come. Lord, thank you that we can look around this room today and know that each person here knows you and loves you. And Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that we can come into this place and exalt you and worship you and lift your name up above every single name. Lord, our hearts are, are just so desiring to be touched and changed today by your presence, by your word, by worshiping you and being in your presence, being close to you today. Lord, I pray that you'll draw us near, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that, Lord, we would draw so close to you. There wouldn't be one person here today that doesn't draw near, because you said if we draw near to you, you would draw near to us. And, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the, the power that will flow from heaven. We thank you, Lord, that there's an anointing here. As your people call on you, there's an anointing of your spirit, Lord, that breaks every yoke, that breaks every bondage. I thank you, Lord, today. I thank you for the freedom there is in Jesus. Lord, you even sent your word. We're going to read it today, Lord, where at a point in our life, Father, we were free from righteousness. We were living in sin. We were living in darkness. We were free from righteousness. But you set us free, Lord, to be slaves of righteousness, to be close to you, Father, to be your children. We thank you, Lord, and praise you. Touch each person here today, Lord. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. All right, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to wait until everybody says amen because I'm not going to do that. Amen. Uh, I've got a message this morning entitled, A Living in the Beauties of Holiness. How many of you notice that uh, a lot of times it's stated, uh, living in the beauty of holiness, but there are beauties in the holiness of Jesus. Amen? You don't hear a lot of sermons today on holiness. And uh, I, I, uh, when I got saved, I, I understood our walk to be a walk of holiness, not because of what I do, but because of what the Lord has done, and because the Lord has done so much, I just walk in holiness. Amen. Because there's so much power available to me to walk in holiness. Amen. That's always been my understanding as I read the Word of God, that, you know, I'm holy because the Lord took my sin away. The Lord took my sin to the cross. The Lord pronounced me as righteous, amen, amen. as justified. The Lord pronounced and out of, out of just a heart of gratitude, I walk in holiness. I want to walk in holiness. Do I do it all the time? Sometimes I, I make a mistake or whatever, but I go right back to the throne of grace, and the Lord forgives me, and I move on. And it's just Amen. an awesome thing. Amen? So the message title this morning is Living in the Beauties, in the Beauties of Holiness. And I have a scripture up on the wall here. It's actually on the screen, not on the wall. Because if it was on the wall, you probably couldn't read it. Amen? But it's uh, Psalm 110, verse 3. Boy, we quoted a lot of the Psalms today. Amen? How many of you know there are good things in the Psalms? Praise the Lord. Uh, if, you read, if you read three Psalms a day and one proverb a day, when I say one proverb, one chapter of Proverbs, and, one, and three chapters in Psalms, you will read, every month you will read through Psalms and Proverbs. And those are, uh, believe me, those are very important things to read and to have under your belt this morning. Amen? So, uh, I want you to look up because there's a verse that's underlined. And it's right in the middle. And so it's important that we understand this verse before we understand any of the other verses that I have up on the screen this morning. Amen? And this is Psalm 110, verse 3. And it says this. All right? Uh, and by the way, I want us all to read that middle verse, all right? Which says, in the beauties of holiness. Now, in case you wondered where I got my title from, right there. Amen? So I nicked it right off of David. Isn't that nice? Okay. Psalm 110, verse 3. So all these verses surround that middle verse. It says this, your people shall be volunteers. Wow. Amen. How many of you love it when somebody volunteers you to do something? <laughs> I was at a program at the Camplex uh, one time, 
and it was a, it was like this Beach Boys thing, this Beach Boys review. You remember that? And my grandkids volunteered me. And by the way, Gordon Harper was in the audience. All right, so he saw all this and, and made fun of me for a long time. Amen. But my grandkids volunteered for me to go up on stage, and I had to, while somebody was singing, I had to do all these surfing moves. And In dreadlocks. In dreadlocks, yes. <laughs> and of course, you know me, I'm a, I'm a good sport, I do anything. Uh, I'm a very good sport, and, and anyway, so I did it. A anyway, so people uh, don't like to be volunteered, but God says there's a coming a day when everybody's going to be a volunteer. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Some say, oh, I don't know about that one. Well, anyway. All right. In the day of your power. In the day of your power. That's translated in the last days, okay? So in the last days, God's people are going to volunteer for some pretty powerful things. Oh, come on, church. Amen. 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 God's people, even the introverts, are going to say, I, I'm stepping up to this. All right? That's a good verse. I love this verse. All right? That's in your Bible. That's in the Old Testament. And a lot of the Old Testament looks forward to the day of, of God's power or the day of the Lord or your day, Lord, whatever. It's, the, it's a day uh, uh, preceding the coming of Jesus, amen, and during the co coming of Jesus. So uh, the, the, the key verse here is there are going to be a group of people that are, like Louise said in the beginning of the service, are going to be walking in holiness. When you walk in holiness, it's amazing how God volunteers you Amen. to do things. Amen? Amen? And uh, He uses you powerfully and mightily. Watch this. We were talking about strength this morning. This couldn't be... Well, Louise, did you sneak into my house and look at my notes? No. Nope. Okay, alright. Look, look at this. This is exactly what he says is right in this verse here. From the womb of the morning... You have the dew of your youth. Now, in English, that doesn't come across too clear, but this is important because he says, in that day, he says, there's a group of people that are going to be walking in holiness, mm -hmm. and because of that, God's going to put them forward in this world. He's going to put them forward to do exploits, like Daniel said, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And because these people know God and walk in holiness, God is going to use them to do exploits. And it says here at these last bottom two sentences, he says, from the womb of the morning. In other words, from when you get out of bed. Hallelujah. Right when you get out of bed, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Now, how many of you caught yourself saying, boy, I wish I had the energy I had when I was 20 years old. Amen? Now, some of you are not yet 20, so you won't be asking that question, all right? But some of us old folks, we always ask that question, boy, I wish I had the energy. Well, there seems to be a verse in Scripture that says, all you have to do is walk in holiness. And why did I say that? Why did that, those words just come out, all you have to do is walk in holiness? Because it's a walk in the Spirit which God will lead you if you will submit to God Submit your body to God and let Him do it in you. Amen? He says, you... I know about... I, I get excited about this because I want some of that do. Amen? Amen? I want some of that strength. Praise God. We prayed for strength for people this morning and God is going to give it to us. Amen? And the way to do that is to walk in holiness. And yes, you can walk in holiness. Amen? Amen? I'm going to read that whole verse to you that I just quoted. Daniel 11, 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God will be strong and do exploits. So these people are not going to let the devil tell them, oh, you know, everybody sins every once in a while. Everybody sins a little bit here and there. Amen. Nobody's perfect. He's going to tell you all kinds of lies. He's going to tell you how good you are anyway in spite of it. And it's your, you know, it's your, it's your clean, beautiful heart. And, and, and all this kind of stuff, he's going to flatter you. He says, but the people that do know their God will not buy it. Mm -hmm. They will be strong Amen. and they will do exploits. Amen. Now the reason I'm sharing this verse this morning, or these verses this morning, is because Susan and I, we sat down after the conference we went to. There are some pretty people that are out there 
when I say out there, I mean God has put them out there. They're, they volunteered, and God has raised them to a level where people, people know who they are. They bring books. They, they instruct the church, and so on and so forth. But I want the, the one thing Susan and I noticed, and we talked about it a couple days ago, where these men and women walk in holiness. And because they walk in holiness, I'm telling you, God lifts them up and raises them. Amen. Amen. And doesn't the scripture say that? If you walk in pride, you get tore down. I preached <laughs> on it for a couple weeks. But guess what? You humble yourself, God will lift you up. Amen. Amen. Isn't that true? Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11.32. I got that in my notes. I don't have it up on the screen. But that's an important verse. People that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. They walk yes. in holiness in a high level of warfare. In a high level of warfare, yes. They're Amen. full of faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I'm glad you brought that up because you become full. As you walk in holiness, if you take that part of your life and you trust God with it, then you, you will walk in faith in a lot of other areas in your life. You will, and I will tell you right now, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. There's very little on earth that you will fear. I want that to sink in for just a minute. You walk in holiness, there is very little on earth that you will fear. It's the fearful that bite their nails. I guess I, well, I stop biting my nails, amen. I just got convicted, amen. <laughs> It, it, seriously, it is. It's the one that walk, the people that walk in sin are the ones that are afraid. Amen. Amen? Amen. They're just scared to death of everything. Praise the Lord. All right. Anyway, uh, so we went to a conference where uh, talking about taking on the culture war, but uh, I look at the uh, culture war and evangelism basically as two sides of the same coin. I really do. Because both of them are influencing a people. Amen? Amen? And evangelism, believe me, evangelism <coughs> takes some courage. But if we realized how easy evangelism really is. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth, Luis? If we realize how easy evangelism is. I have a, a script that uh, we walked around Billings one time. Just using this script, written down, reading it to people. Mm -hmm. And what a powerful event that was, wasn't it? Just a, a presentation of the gospel. But we were reading it. One time I was walking up the street. There's a biker, uh, not a biker, but a, a guy riding a bicycle. And he was riding kind of slow. And, and I just walked up the block with him while he was riding his bicycle, reading it. And he's like, that's so good. That's so one Bang. <laughs> Uh, Susan went after a, a what you you went after a banker lady or something I like guess, that. Yes, but we were part of uh, Rodney Howard Brown's World Evangelism. World, and, yes. And uh, we took a team up there with the church. Right. And uh, we had like I don't know, eight people. Yes. And we all went out on the streets evangelizing. And, and yes, I chased down two homeless guys. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> and and then I walk up to a lady uh, who's getting out of her BMW. And was witnessing, you know, to all of them. And I got to go up on stage on God TV. And as they said, they talked about how the gospel works from the crack house to the penthouse. And um, they had me come up with that. But yeah, that later. lady, that lady was moved to tears. Like, one anyway, moment of faith, but it's very, it's very easy. Like I say, you take a piece of paper out and, and talk to people, and they won't think it's uh, disingenuous if you do. They really won't. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, this Hebrews twelve twelve says this. Uh, therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Amen? So how do you strengthen hands that are hanging down and feeble knees? By walking a straight path. That's what it says right there. Amen? Amen. Pretty clear, isn't it? All right? You're going to have the power to raise people up. Amen? You yourself have to walk a straight path. Amen. So watch this. Here's the reason why. So that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Amen? So you don't want people that are weak continuing to be weak. You don't want them to eventually go lame. I'm not talking about just in their physical body. I'm talking about spiritually. You don't want them to grow spiritually lame. You want them to be healed. You want them to be strong. How do you accomplish that? It says by walking a straight path. 
Hallelujah. That means walking in holiness, following after the Holy Spirit and letting Him lead you. Is that important or what? Huh? Mm -hmm. So whether we're taking on the culture war, because I work with a lot of people that take on the culture war, and I work with a lot of people that, that evangelize, amen? And I love to evangelize. I like to talk. I love to talk to people. What is it? To, how do you do it? You do it by walking straight. You don't attempt to evangelize to people if your own life is a mess. Mm -hmm. Amen? You let God take you out of the mess, move you out of the mess, and then you testify how good God is to people, and they begin to hear you and hear your voice. Amen? Verse 14, pursue peace. Watch this. Pursue peace with all people. And holiness. Does it say to pursue holiness? Doesn't it say that up there? Pursue peace and pursue holiness. Without which, no one will see the Lord. So a lot of people will tell you, well, holiness is optional. No, it's not optional. Amen. No, it's not optional. It's very important to, to, for the kingdom work to go on. Beloved, I know it's not popular to say this today, but you've got to live a holy life. Amen. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. You can do it. So that you don't get the credit, God gets the credit. Amen. God gets the glory. Amen. Amen. All right, so whether you're working with the culture war like we're talking about, or whether we're, you're working with evangelism, they're two sides of the same coin. Both raid and pillage the kingdom of darkness. Amen. 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 So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if we're talking to politicians or we're talking to... Uh, people that are, are lost, I guess they're, some of them are this, this one and the same, right? Anyway, uh, you understand, we're, yeah, most of them. we're right in the kingdom of darkness. And uh, at the bottom point, I have a little arrow there. It says, those who take on our culture or those who evangelize keenly understand their sin and holiness. Amen? And they know, amen, they know they're powerless when they walk after the flesh. Praise the Lord. All right, now, here's a tutorial. I want you to understand, because I'm going to read a scripture in just a minute. You can turn to Romans 6 while I'm, while I'm uh, talking about this uh, MasterCard up here. Looks like MasterCard, right? Amen. But it's two words, will or shall. Will or shall. And I know some people use those two words in English wrong. Uh, sometimes they use the word for will or the word for shall as will, and will as shall. But anyway, they get them, uh, but they both at least express future events. Amen? Right? Will and shall. We shall do this. I will do this. Amen? Future events. Now, you've got to know the difference between the two, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you into Romans 6, verse 15, I believe it is, and we're, we're going to look at this, okay? This is Paul. We're talking about holiness. We're talking about the beauties of holiness. The beauties are the, uh, the anointings or the adornments of God's character in your life. Walking in the beauties of holiness. So, number one, Paul kind of talks about this, uh, walking in holiness. And, and he says this in Romans 6. Romans is a good book to read. gives you the foundations of the faith. Romans 6 says this, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? I'm going to stop there because a lot of people have doctrines today that say we should, we, you know, it's just, we're going to sin, we're just, you know, we're going to sin, we're going to sin, we're going to sin. So we got grace, we can get under that cover of grace, and we can, definitely. Amen? But the, the shall we means to initiate. Shall we, shall we initiate sin because we are under law, or not under law, but under grace? Amen? Now, let me ask you a question. Are we under the law? Yes. No. Okay, we're, no, Paul says not under law. Okay, we're not, we are not technically under the law. But the law is in the Word of God. Amen. The law is for us to read. The law reveals the character of Almighty God tells us who God is, and if we're children of God, shouldn't we be like the Father? Of course. Yes. Amen? So though the law doesn't, you don't, you, you don't walk in the law to be justified or to be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
But when you get saved, you still include the law in your life. Amen. Right? Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope it did. Except for the, the, um, <clears throat> what is it, the, the blood sacrifice. The blood, yes, you need the blood. Yeah, because that was done away with at the cross. Okay. Yeah. But pretty much the rest of it is... Yeah, the sacrifices, of course, were done away with because Jesus fulfilled those. But the, the righteous requirements of the law are, are there. They're in place. Amen? And that's how we know we're walking in holiness because that law is a beautiful picture of walking holy under the Lord. Amen? So very, very important. So a lot of people uh, say today that uh, we can sin because we're not under law, we're under grace. Amen? Now, John told us that it, if we sin, not if we initiate sin, but he says if we sin, we can ask for forgiveness. Amen? If we sin. So, uh, uh, shall we sin? The answer is certainly not, right? God does not want us to intentionally initiate sin. And a lot of people are walking around saying, I can do that. And that is not what God wants. Amen? Now, if it said, will we sin? Instead of will and shall, right? Remember that slide I just showed you up there? Will and shall? All right? What about if we replace it with, will we sin? Yes. Probably so. Yes. We will. But John again said, if we do, guess what? We have an advocate. We have someone, amen, Jesus Christ. So we don't initiate it, but if we do, we get forgiveness. Isn't that awesome? I mean, that is so beautiful. Thank the Lord. Verse 16. He says, do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Today, slavery is a very, very tricky word, isn't it? Amen? Slavery. Ooh, you talk about slavery and you hear about reparations and this and that and the other thing. You know, the people that have gone through slavery or whatever, or have suffered through it, they need to be remunerated and not this and that and the other thing. But certainly what they do portray is that slavery is not a good thing. Amen? Except when you're a slave to righteousness. Then all of a sudden it becomes a good thing. So you're going to be a slave to one or the other. If you initiate sin, you're a slave to sin. I didn't say if you made a mistake. I said if you initiate sin, if you go into it with the understanding that you're under grace and you can sin anyway, you are as far off the mark as anybody can be. Are you with me? Amen. Verse 17. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed, yet you obeyed, yet you obeyed. You see it written in the scripture? Obedience is necessary. From the heart, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Amen? The doctrine to which you were delivered was the scripture, was the word of God, was what we're reading here in Romans. You were delivered unto that, and it's good for you and I to obey that doctrine. Amen? Verse 18. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So guess what? The Lord just bought your contract. Amen. Amen. The Lord, all the Lord did was yeah, take it away from the devil, and he, he's got it now. Amen. He's got it. Praise God. I'm glad it's in his hands now. And now I'm his slave. Hallelujah. Now I'm a slave to righteousness. Praise God. And this is not slavery leading to death, but slavery leading to life. Hallelujah. Any excuse for sin is not because we are under grace. Amen. Amen? Write that down. That's important. Any excuses for sin is not because we are under grace. Amen? If we make a mistake, that's a different story. Praise God. So I want you to understand that holy men and holy women of God are who God is going to use Amen. in the coming days. Praise God. And it is important. And it is important that we stand and walk in holiness. Before, and I'll show you some, uh, some other scriptures why. Okay? Number two, are we weak? It's amazing we were praying. 
Now I prepared this a couple of days ago, Luis. So you know, you, you know, you you uh, you had you were you were reading my mail, okay? Right. Uh, number two, are we weak? Verse 19, I speak in human terms. Remember that from last week? We read a scripture that said, let's consider Israel after the flesh. All right? So yeah, in the flesh, we're weak. Let's speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For as just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, that's an important word. Lawlessness means having no law. We are not under law, but we still have a law. Amen? We don't want to walk around Gillette looking like we have no law. We do. We have a ton of it. We at least have ten commandments. Praise God. Amen. I don't know why people try to complicate it. You look at those ten commandments, you will walk in holiness if you obey those. Amen? We don't obey them because... To get right, we don't obey them to get justified. We obey them because we are justified. Are you with me? Amen. So lawlessness, it says, leading to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. There it is. So Paul says, present your body for holiness under the Lord. Amen. You see, lawlessness today is taught as trans, uh, transcendence or transhuman. Uh, the law today is taught like that's puritanical. The law is, is just is so outdated, it's so old, it's so passe. In case you understand what those words mean, amen? Uh, so what we have to do as human beings now, we have to rise above that. Aren't, aren't we progressive enough today to rise above the law and to rise above the gospel and to rise above? So what the world is trying to teach us today to do is to live in, in lawlessness as though there is no law so we can transcend who we are and become even better people. And I want to tell you something. That's baloney. We will never become better people by transcending the Word of God. Ever. Amen. Amen? And of course that's under the guise of transhumanism, which, you know, you just you'll become a better person. If we could just change your DNA, if we could just, you know, change the way you look at things, you will just rise above everything. And that's the, basically the way the devil lied to Eve. And he's lying to all of us the same way. That's why we need to walk in holiness. Matthew 26 41, this is out of Jesus' mouth. He said, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Boy, I wish we really understood that. Because all God's desires to you, amen, come through your spirit. Amen? That's why, Luis, you said this morning, out of your mouth, that you said that we need to take care of our soul. So instead of our soul listening to our flesh, what is our flesh? I don't feel like it. I'm afraid. I don't think I, don't think I should get into that. I don't think I should. And the Spirit's like, go, 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 go. But yeah, you know, it's like the, the old cartoons where the devil sits on one arm and an angel sits on the other arm and tells the guy what to do. Amen? Well, it's, it's the same thing going on right now. Amen? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he spoke that in the Garden of Gethsemane when the disciples were falling asleep and he was getting ready to go to the cross. Here's a vivid illustration right there. Amen? We can't be asleep today. That's why God, Jesus wants us to walk in holiness. Amen? That's why we must. Praise God. The flesh is weak. Hallelujah. So if you're, if you're going to take on the culture or you're going to evangelize, you can't be a slave of lawlessness. You can't be a slave of sin. Praise God. Amen? Number three. This, is, this has to do with number three here. Which one looks better? The one over there, the one left or right? Which one looks better? Huh? Left, you think? Okay. So we want to look like that picture over there, right? If this is our lives. We want to look like, I just want to make you hungry. That's why I did this. So sure. uh, I did? Thank you. Good job. All right. So this is all you're going to remember of the sermon, right? No. That's not right. 
Okay, so we, we don't want that because, you know, God's into presentation. Amen. I learned that word from the Food Channel. <laughs> you can learn things from the Food Channel. God's into presentation. You know, you put a, you make scrambled eggs or whatever, and you put it on a plate, and it looks all right and everything, but you put some a little bit of parsley on there, run some bacon along the side of it, or I told you I'm trying to make you hungry. And, and you know, seriously. But there's an application to this. I'm not just trying to be funny, all right? So if it's appetizing and pleasing, people are going to want it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what the church needs to be. You start eating with your eyes. Yeah, you do. Appetizing and pleasing. Praise God. So, I think that one looks better. Amen? Presentation means a lot, even in the kingdom of God. So, the last thing Paul shares is, are we ashamed? Amen? Are we ashamed? And this goes down to verse 20. Uh, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Amen? I told you that was in here, and it, it is. Amen? When you were in darkness, you and many of you could have sinned, out sinned the next guy. Amen? When you were in the darkness. You were what we call a good sinner. Amen? So, when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit, that's where I got the idea, what fruit did you have then in the things which you are now ashamed? So, as you look back on your life, you would look at that fruit on the right side and you would say, that was me. That was me. But on the, the fruit on the left side, look what Jesus did in me. Look what Jesus has accomplished in my life. Amen? So what fruit did you have that you are now ashamed of? For in the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin, I reiterate that again, you are set free from sin. One more time, you are set free from sin. Don't let the devil lie to you. You are. He says, since that has happened, you have become slaves of God. You have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Hallelujah. So you are meant, whether you realize it or not, to live a life of holiness on this side and then to have eternal life on the other side. Amen. Amen? And that's and that's eternal life on this side is to live in holiness. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, yeah. the, the, the bad fruit, folks, we need to be ashamed of. And we as a group of Christians, as a generation of Christians, have lost our shame. I believe what, why we recognized these men as holy that we were listening to was because they were ashamed of their sin. It was evident. And they were not only ashamed of their sin, but they were ashamed of the sin of their culture. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you're ashamed of the sin of the culture, you will evangelize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will be a culture warrior, and you will be an evangelist. I believe they go together. I really do. And I believe thousands, countless souls will be won. Because men and women, like that first scripture I, out of Psalms 110, they're going to volunteer. They're going to say, I'm walking, I'm walking in holiness. I've been, never been happier in my life. I'm, I'm just going to volunteer. I'm so full of joy. i got to share it with somebody. I can't contain it anymore. Amen? Hallelujah. So, are we ashamed? So, three points were, shall we sin? No. No. Will we sin? Yes. Right? Okay. We taught you something. Good. Are we weak? In the flesh. Yes, we are. Absolutely. But we're still called to walk in holiness. Why? Because the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. And our spirit tells our soul what to do. Amen. Pretty, pretty simple, right? Number three, are we ashamed? The sin in our life, we need to be ashamed of. We need to get it. We need to confess it. We need to repent immediately. Immediate repentance. Amen? 
and continue our walk on listening to the Holy Spirit. All right? So, let me, sh let me finish with this. The holy hear the call. The holy hear the call. You've got to be serious with God to hear the call of God. You've got to be intimate with the Lord to hear the call of God. You'll never be able to walk in holiness unless you're intimate with Jesus. Unless you spend time with Jesus. Unless you spend time listening to the Holy Spirit. Letting Jesus talk to you. Having fellowship with Him. Having private worship. Amen? You'll walk in holiness. But the holy men and women of God will hear that call of God. The last day's call. Some of you, I'm sure, have glossed over that first scripture in Psalm 110. And just read it in verse 3. And read over it and just went on. Amen? But sometimes, you know, when you're hearing from God. And when you're looking at your world uh, that wants to just go to hell. That wants to just transcend uh, all forms of godliness and holiness. When you look at this world and you see all this, amen, it, it should do something on the inside of you and me and cause us to hear the call of God. This is 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Him everywhere. Listen, first of all, if we're living in sin, we're not spreading the knowledge of Him. Amen. We're spreading the knowledge of the devil. Pretty simple, isn't it? But how many of you this morning, if there was a parade downtown, uh, you would volunteer <laughs> to go march in the parade? Anybody? Mm -mm. A few. Yeah, I figured a few hands. But some of us would... That wouldn't be our most favorite thing to do, to march in a parade. Would it? To be seen by so many people and to, you know, march in the heat and this and that and the other thing. But he says that's exactly what Jesus takes all of us to do. He tries to take all of us by the hand and do. To march us around in a parade in front of people, holding us by the hand, marching us around. Isn't that what it's saying? In a triumphal procession because you are a trophy. And you are a trophy. And you are a trophy. And back there, you're a trophy. And over here, you're a trophy. He's marching you around in His procession because He has had victory in your life. You have received salvation from Him. And He marches you around. He doesn't just put you in a trophy case somewhere. He doesn't put you just on a shelf somewhere. But He takes you by the hand and He marches you around through town, through darkness, through hell and back. But He marches you around and He says, This one is mine. Take a look at this one. Amen. 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 I love that verse. Can you tell? <laughs> For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ. To the Father, we smell like Jesus. That's why He takes us by the hand and marches us around. That's what we're supposed to smell like. Amen. We're supposed to smell like Jesus. We're supposed to act like Jesus. That's why I say you got to walk in holiness. Amen? Holiness is just your understanding that i gotta, I got to be like God. I can't, I can't be like myself anymore. i got to be like Him. And then He gives you the courage. That's what we need in this church. That's what we need in the church of Jesus Christ. That's what we need all over the country is some courage. And this is how you get courage, by getting serious with God and walking in holiness. Amen? He says, we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Watch this. To the one, we are aroma that brings death. To the other, we are an aroma that brings life. And who is equal to such a task? We have to get used to the idea that there are going to be some people in this world that are going to cross their arms and say, you smell like death. And why not? We're bringing a message that says you're lost in your sin. If you die in your sin, you will go to hell. You see, you got to get saved. If you're going to get saved, you got to get saved from something. We're saved from darkness, from hell, from a life of darkness into a light of light, the life of light in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
And so he says to some, they're going to they're going to take a whiff of you, and they're going to death, death, death. That's what they're going to say. But to some of you, to some of you, like the beautiful lady that you're ministering to, Louise, she smells life. See, she smells life, and she's going after it. She's getting close to death. She's thinking about eternity. Amen? And there are so many out there that are thinking about eternity that aren't just thinking about them. their silly selves, but they're really thinking now about eternity. Amen? She says, so, one aroma of, of ours brings life, one aroma of ours brings death. He says, and watch this, and he says this, and who is equal to such a task? Those, those are words that stop me cold. Who is equal to to such a task. In other words, did God save me because I'm a qualified individual? I mean, I'm just like, I got all the qualifications. Did God save me for, because of that? Did he look at me and say, Ed, you, you, you're what I need. I really need you. You know, you're just, a, you're just, you're going to be an evangelism, uh, you know, canon because you got all the stuff. No. That's not true. He says, who's equal to such a task? I didn't get called because, you know, I had it. I, got, I was called to walk in obedience and to walk in holiness. So eventually I could attain what the Lord wanted me to attain. Mm -hmm. He says, on the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. Understand what he says. I don't care if we're reading a script to people. I don't care if we're reading a script to a guy on a bicycle and we're running down the street, you know, reading in the script. Amen. It says here that we speak before God. In other words, it's God who knows who we are. It's God who knows that we're a phony or we're the real deal. We're speaking before Almighty God with sincerity as those who whom God himself has sent. One question I have when I read this verse, I, I think to myself, what would the Apostle John, one of Jesus' most beloved disciples, what would John have missed if he was not intimate with God and had not walked in holiness? What would John have missed just bear with me for another couple of minutes, amen? Think about it for a minute. The Apostle John. Remember what book John wrote? The book of Revelation. Amen? It's like I was, I, I was thinking, you know, I, what would Isaiah have missed if, he, if we were singing this morning about Isaiah uh, taking, God taking the coal and putting it on his lips and seeing that he was unclean and, and so on and so forth. And, and all this revelation that God gave to Isaiah... Amen? Because Isaiah decided that he was going to walk in holiness with the Lord. Amen? What would John have missed if he wasn't going to walk in holiness? He would have missed the fourth chapter of Revelation. He would have missed the whole book of Revelation. Maybe God would have used somebody else. I don't know. All I know is when you get to the fourth chapter of Revelation, and we, it, John says this, I got it written down here, he says, uh, after this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Hallelujah. That's where we get our church name. A door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what may take place after this. And God took John and gave him a revelation. He showed him the throne room of heaven. He showed Jesus breaking every scroll and, and, and buying back the earth. He saw Jesus coming back. He saw Jesus overthrowing the kingdom of darkness. He saw Babylon falling. He saw so much. How did he see it? Because he decided to get down with God, to get righteous with God, to get holy with God, and to walk in holiness with Him. Because of it, we read it today. That's the sacrifice that saved our life. I just think, I just think this morning, my goodness, can't we just give him what he wants and what he desires? See, he wants all of us. That's all he wants. All of us. Everything. And 
I, I, don't, I don't doubt this morning that when Luis said, those that need strength, those that need strength, raise your hand. This is raise your hand. I don't doubt that everyone in this room needs the strength of God. Would you stand with me? Would you just stand with me this morning? I want to pray with everybody. Everybody in the room this morning. I want, the, I want you to let the Holy Spirit touch your heart this morning. But there's a walk in God that many of us have missed. Many of us have missed that close walk with God that only He can bring about in our life. But we have to yield to Him. And I want to pray right now. And if you really need the Lord to, to minister to you today, if you really want God to hear your prayers, if you really want, then you're going to need to walk in holiness this morning. I, I'm not saying that God doesn't hear prayers from people that don't walk in holiness. I'm not saying that. But I am saying this morning that it's going to take an, an, a certain amount of your heart in this to say, I'm going to, I'm going to be a holy man and I'm going to be a holy woman of God. I'm going to be that person, God. I'm going to be that person. And I'm going to, I'm going to see the beauties of holiness in my life. I'm going to be one of them volunteers. I'm going to be one of them that, that uh, you, you use like John on the Isle of Patmos. I'm going to be one of those like Isaiah that you use. Amen? In the name of Jesus, I want you to lift your hands. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we surrender. Lord, we surrender our lives to you. Each person in this room today. We do that in the mighty name of Jesus. We surrender. I surrender all. Lord, you want everything from us. You want us to walk in holiness. You don't want us to walk in sin. You don't want us to initiate sin. Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that those in this room with their hands up are calling on you for strength. And Lord, you said you would give us your strength. It would be like the dew of the morning. It would come upon us, Lord, as we walk in holiness. The dew of the morning, the, dew of, uh, the strength of our youth would come upon us and, Lord, we would be your spokespeople. You would parade us around, Lord, throughout this city as, as Lord, of the aroma of Christ. And, Lord, I'm asking you to do it right now. And, Lord, I commit myself and each person here that will commit themselves to doing that, to walking in holiness. And, Lord, to let our souls agree with the Spirit of the living God. And to move, Lord, with you. And Lord, as I said at the keyboard, the greatest things that you're going to do, we haven't seen yet, but Lord, they're ahead of us. And I pray that, Lord, we will heed your call. And we walk in holiness. We take those Ten Commandments and we do them. We just do them because you've given us the Holy Spirit to do it. I thank you and give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. I believe we've done business with the Lord this morning, amen, which is now this afternoon, amen.